Okay, uh, my name is Felix, uh, Felix Zulhendri. Uh, I'm an owner operator of uh, Kebun Madu FE. So uh, today I'm going to explain to you about uh, different types of bees and different types of products uh, that are there. But uh, we're going to focus on what we actually produce here. So there are several types of bees. Um, the, the typical ones that you guys know, uh, that see on TV or in documentary, is usually called uh, the Apis uh, feet, uh, bee. It's from a, gener uh, a genus called Apis. So it, Apis bees, there are several types of Apis bees as well. But the typical ones are called Apis mellifera, which is the European honey bees. It's usually, um, and they produce a lot of uh, honey. So that's why a lot of people use uh, Apis mellifera. But we in Indonesia, because we're in the tropical, uh, sub tropical environment, sorry, it's not subtropical, but it's tropical environment, we tend to have like higher humidity and a uh, higher rate of rain, rainfall. So uh, Apis mellifera uh, is not really suitable for, uh, for tropical environment. So we, we, we tend to have uh, Apis serrana, which is an uh, Asian honeybee. And you, we can't really uh, keep Asian honeybee as a commercial um, type of bees where you can harvest uh, every, every now and then because there's the genetic and the, uh, the typical behavior is that they, they tend to move away. Um, Typical, typically every every two months they'll just move away. So this is a dead hive. This is a dead uh, trigona hive. But you see this uh, sort of like a small hive. Uh, Abyss runner hive started uh, taking over the, uh, the hive now. Now in uh, Kabun Efi, uh, I'm trying to develop uh, the, the local tropical bees, which is called, uh, it's from genus uh, Trigona. So there are, two, there are several genus uh, of trigona bees. There's genio uh, trigona and also hetero trigona. So this is called the genio trigona thoracica. Show you. And I, I really like this particular bee because they, they collect uh, a lot of propolis. There's, it's called stingless bees. Uh, they don't sting, but they bite. Okay, but this is okay. This one's not too bad. Okay, this is called the... the all the, the thoracica bees. Going back to uh, to different types of uh, bee products, there are actually four types of bee products from a beehive. So if you've got honey, we've got pollen, we've got uh, royal jelly, and we've got uh, propolis. So the first three, which is uh, honey, uh, pollen, and royal jelly, they are considered as food. Honey is uh, uh, is a carbohydrate source for the uh, for the bees. So as if like we humans, we tend to eat rice. And potatoes and sweet potatoes or whatever so that's the carbohydrate source it's the same as the bees so the bees use honey as the their carbohydrate the primary carbohydrate source they also collect pollen pollen is their protein source as if like we're eating um, meat fish or what yeah meat and fish and eggs so that's our protein source and the bee pollen is actually uh, their protein source the bees protein source and royal jelly is produced by the uh, by the nurse bees to feed the uh, the queens the queen bees, and it's it's also a protein source for the queens. Okay, so I ca I, quite, I really enjoy uh, raising this type of bees because they collect a lot of propolis. So I'm focusing more um, on on producing propolis extract now in Kabun Fe because of for me one it's because we are not uh, we are not disturbing their food source like honey and pollen and royal jelly. It's very it's very crucial for the for the bees. Secondly, it's because uh, propolis has a lot of um, health benefits for humans. The reason why uh, bees collect propolis is the same reason, it's almost the same reason as why it's very beneficial to us as humans. Uh, propolis is a plant resin uh, collected by the bees. So uh, it contains a lot of uh, beeswax, uh, a, lot, a bit of beeswax, uh, a lot of flavonoids, polyphenols, uh, terpenoids. So those compounds are strong in antibacterial, antiviral properties and also anti-inflammatory anti and, uh, and uh, immune modulator. So those, those properties for the bees are the same, uh, the exact properties uh, that are beneficial to us as humans when we consume propolis. And propolis has been used uh, for centuries in, in like, uh, ancient Greek times, ancient Egyptian times um, for, for exactly for those purposes to treat wounds, uh, for infections, uh, to, uh, to protect us from uh, microbial infections and also for uh, anti-inflammation, okay? So that's the reason why I really enjoy uh, raising these bees and we focus solely on uh, producing propolis now. So this is the propolis.
and from here you can actually see uh, there are different colors so you see this is the darker color one okay. and this is the lighter color one so we can see that they collect um, propolis from different plants so the colors uh, the, the the flavors the the smell it really depends on the on the type of plants from where the propolis is collected from so it's not um, it's not it doesn't depend on us but it really depends on the on the bees and also on the uh, on the surrounding plants so if, if I pick this you can to smell it so it, if we so this is sort of like piney uh, a lot of pine pine propolis but we have to like break it up and smell it the smell is good yeah mm. yeah it's, it smells like pine, pine right yeah. Yeah. yeah because we have a lot of pines here oh, okay. yeah. speaking about uh, honey and pollen so it's, it's these type of bees are a bit different so they they keep their honey and pollen around here the liquid thing so that's the that's the honey and the pollen's usually around next to it if they already keep it usually maybe they don't have any pollen store at the moment so that's the reason why uh, as well I don't actually harvest the honey and pollen because they have a very uh, low um, food store food storage so if we harvest the honey and we harvest the pollen, they'll just die. So there's, there's a, okay, I'll show you the main hive here. This is called Heterotrigona Itama. I'll show you the side, so the side the shape. You see? So this is called the brood. You see the hexagonal shape? So even though the, the this is the totally different type of bees, right? This is the Trigona bees. You can see the, the, conser the conserved uh, mm -hmm. hexagonal shape see. the hexagonal shape in terms of uh, strength of structure and the uh, the amount of material needed to build this type is the most uh, optimum so you have the this the lowest amount of material and yet you have the the strongest uh, physical structure so that's why they, they so that's why in nature they, they always use this hexagonal shape especially in the in the insect world Hi guys, we are at Madu Evi and here we have the owner, the operator, the manager and everything. Felix, nice to have you here. Thank you, my pleasure, my pleasure. Okay, uh, if any of us have any questions, we have primary six teachers here. But my first question is, uh, actually I already asked before, but is it okay if I operate this in for only for hobby? Where can I get yes. all the resources? So uh, yeah, for, for beginners, uh, for home uh, purpose uh, beekeeper, um, I think it's okay. You can just pick uh, either Trigona Itama or Thoracica, but I would, I would suggest the Thoracica one because it's 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 more it's gentler. It doesn't tend to bite, but where's the Itama one? It tends to bite. Oh. Right okay, what in request? What do uh, I need number to do first? Is we have to make sure that uh, they have enough food uh, sources, meaning a lot of plants. Oh, a lot of area, uh, yeah. surroundings, yes, okay? Yes, and that's it. That's pretty much it. Because the Trigona bees are, are definitely uh, endemic in Indonesia, meaning that it's actually Indonesia. I mean, they, 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 they evolve in Indonesia, so it doesn't really matter. And they're, they're adaptable to the uh, high humidity environment. Oh, so as yeah. long as we have enough food resource, yes. so uh, we can do this uh, as hobby, we don't do yes. this in big operation no, like no you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, teachers, do you have any questions you want to ask uh, Felix here? Any? Okay, so for one hive for me, uh, can we know how many bees we have to collect there to make our colony? Uh, no, as long as, I mean, uh, judging, the way that we judge a colony is that you just see. Uh, if you if you're really used to it, you can actually see whether the colony is actually in a good condition or not. When you open it, just like when we open it, they're very vibrant. They they, they they fly out straight away. You can actually see that they're very active. But for a sick colony, it will be it will be very different. When you open it, it will be like very uh, very subdued. It's not about it's not about the amount of bees, 
but it's the condition of the bees. Okay. Yeah, you just have to make sure. Yeah. So I do my homework. I do googling. Yep. Uh, it say it's up to fifty thousand bees in one hive. It's probably at the peak. At the peak, it's probably more. Oh, at yeah. the peak, it's probably yeah, more. probably more. Yeah. yeah. And okay, now. And it, it really depends on. Uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, information about bees in, in Google in the internet usually uh, it will be related to the Apis mellifera, which is the European honey bees. But they are very different uh, when we compare to uh, Trigona bees, which is the tropical bees. Bees and bees are just the same. No, they're and... different. Uh, you can actually see that the when we when I show you the uh, Apis bees, they're very big in size compared to Trigona bees. Yeah, and the and the behavior is very different. Oh, although they are b both bees, uh, and yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Even if know. you look at the uh, in the uh, biological nomenclature, like if you look at the, the genus, the family, and everything, it's totally different. Yeah, very, 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 very. Okay. Uh, one question. Uh, the whole hive, they only have one queen. Yes. The sole purpose is to lay eggs yep. to spawn the whole hive. What happened? But this is out of context. Yeah. When an old queen are uh, already old, yep. producing so, uh, or yeah. die or something yes. happened. So the queen, uh, the purpose of a queen is to lay eggs. Yeah. And the way that they lay eggs is that because when they mate, when they go out as a virgin queen, they mate with drones. They store the uh, the sperm in the in the sperm sac, and they lay eggs. So the so the, the queen will produce uh, an egg, and it will mate the, the the egg with the sperm cell okay. into the into the abdomen, and the they'll and the queens will lay the egg, this, the fertilized eggs, right? So uh, the the limiting factor will be the sperm. So once the sperm store uh, runs out, the, the the colony will kill the queen. Okay. Yeah, so they'll kill the queen, and they'll raise another new queen. So a new queen can be produced by by the worker bees, by the worker eggs. Yeah. So all all the workers of can put, yeah of the of the of the hive can potentially be a queen. So it really depends. So once once the queen is gone, uh, the, the the whole hive will lose the, the queen pheromone, and the and the workers will select a few eggs that will be converted into a, a virgin queen by feeding them. Uh, the royal, royal jelly. jelly yeah. That's why the name is royal yes, exactly. jelly, it's and that it must be if a bee is so good that can raise a yeah, queen, so it's a, it must be very good for human. Yes, yeah. Oh. But 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 for me, I'm I'm a bit biased towards um, a non-food in, in the hive here yeah. because like uh, the honey, the the bee pollen, and royal jelly, they are they are very high in energy and calories. Like uh, honey, like primarily sugars like uh, natural sugars like gl glucose and fructose yeah. and a bit of sucrose so. and the bee pollen is the, the protein source and the same with the royal jelly so yeah. they are very and royal jelly a lot of maybe a bit of fat as well so royal jelly has a lot of calories as well okay. so we have we gotta have to be uh, so for me i'm a bit biased towards like non-food <laughs> well felix it's been nice it's been informative it's been educational yeah. uh we really enjoy the trip uh, hopefully our students will enjoy this too and then uh, will build a sense of belonging to the environment, the beneficial of bees and everything and uh, bees is very important. It's not just we can get the honey and other products but yes. also to pollinate yep. all plants. Okay, thanks. Sounds good. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you very much.